I was super into bodybuilding from a younger age, but it was kind of from a, a perspective of like wanting to be bigger and stronger for sports. So it wasn't like, I, I idolized those physiques, but I wanted to make it more of like a functional thing. I just wanted to be as big and jacked as humanly possible and play sports at the same time, which kind of go well together with football, which is what I ended up doing. So I, I started with rugby when I was younger, transitioned into football, ended up getting a football scholarship to the University of Rhode Island. Uh, played there for four years, redshirted, so I was there for five. And as soon as I was, literally the day I was done football, I knew I was gonna transition into bodybuilding. Like, I was counting down the days to when, to when I could not play football again and I could just spend my whole time lifting because that was like my number one, my number one love and passion was like, I actually liked lifting and getting stronger and bigger while I was playing football than I actually liked playing football. So it was just a natural, natural transition for me. When I first got out of football and I got into competing, I, was, I did a couple of shows in the Rhode Island area in Boston. I did really shit at those shows, but those, kind of, those shows kind of showed me what I needed to, where I needed to go with my physique to kind of stand on stage with these bigger guys and these guys that were just lifting, like they weren't playing sports. So they had a leg up on me in terms of development and just muscle mass. So I moved back to Canada due to some family issues, but it was a godsend in the end. And I, I started competing up here in Canada. There used to be level systems in the bodybuilding community here, where it's like you had to complete level one, level two, level three to qualify for a national level show, which is where you could attain a pro card. And uh, I did all that within two year, within a two year span. And the third year of competing in Canada, I did the nationals in Vancouver in 2009. And I, I ended up winning my category and then winning the overall for the show, which turned me into a pro bodybuilder. Attaining that status, I, I basically did, I did two pro shows, didn't do well at either of them. Kind of got derailed with a, torn pec and a few other injuries like a torn bicep which I ended up doing later and tearing it again after I fixed it <laughs> and the pec the pec was never the same neither was the shoulder so it was just kind of I kind of cut my losses like I knew bodybuilding wasn't going to be necessarily for me like the higher levels of bodybuilding I always loved bodybuilding and I liked lifting and I loved helping people so I kind of focused my energy towards helping people get to reach their goals in bodybuilding or fitness, whatever it might be, even women with figure contests or fitness shows, whatever it might be, right? So that's kind of where my passion shifted. So I took my love for what I was doing and kind of brought it to, instilled it in other people and found people like-minded like me, as driven as me, and kind of helped them push their physique to the next level. Back together, open the chest deep, fire. Yep. Yep, connect with that whole pump. Like it's a barbell. Settle, head back, drive. Wide yeah. legs, go. Drop down into that butt, drive out. Yeah. It's, it's like how his arm travels in a path of arcing, but his body's allowing himself to, he's pushing away from himself, but he's lifting up. That's how it's taught, right? Whereas these people who they peel back and they sit back and they try and throw weight, they never get it. But that's why his shoulders are so good, right? The mis biggest misconceptions are kind of like my mission statement when it comes to training. It's like, I want to eliminate all the, I'll try and keep it PG because I don't know who's watching this, but all the fluff from the industry and these fake frauds who are claiming that they know this, they know that. They label the, they do the tagline science-based behind everything or like whatever it might be. But literally none of them move properly. Very few. Now, I shouldn't say none because I'm going to catch flack for that, but None of them, are, a lot of them aren't moving efficiently, nor are they doing these exercises they're prescribing to people for like targeting a specific area. They're doing it wrong. So if you're doing it wrong and you can't apply it to yourself, how in the world is the person watching going to apply it to themselves? Because you can't even figure out for yourself. So it's like a lot of this, like, like I preach and a lot of the stuff I talk about, I want to break down, just smash down the walls of this bodybuilding and fitness industry dogma where it's like we do this to let this happen we do we perform these exercises for this body part and those are the only ones we can do and it's like no there's plenty of ways to do things if you think outside the box you know, not even outside the box just do what you're doing in the box better stop thinking that like you have to be a robot and my whole mission statement is to like get people moving better 
I'm not prescribing a way of working out or a style of how many sets you should do, how many reps you should do, what, how long your workout should be, whatever it might be. I'm not prescribing that. I'm prescribing do what you like to do and what you enjoy doing lifting, but let's do it better. So let's move better. Let's do everything in a more efficient manner so you're getting more out of what you already enjoy doing. So if I'm not a fan of deadlifting, just because I don't like deadlifting, doesn't mean that the person who's, because they're listening to me should stop deadlifting. No, let's get you deadlifting better. Maybe your deadlift's great and your back's great. Let's work on your shoulders because your shoulders aren't. And you're obviously not connecting the way you should. And you're just doing, going through the motions of I do these motions for shoulders and why aren't they getting bigger? It's like, well, let's analyze how you're moving and how the body's responding to that movement and then fix those patterns and you're on your way, right? So my, my goal in this, as I said previously, is to change people's movement, get people moving things, doing things better. But it's also like trying to help people understand that like it's such a simple fix. And like I could literally walk into a gym anywhere in the world and watch someone bench press and tell you what they're doing wrong. In my, which it's in my personal view. It's not like there's some textbook thing, oh, you check the box, you're doing all these bing, 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 right. It's like, no, because half the people that are ticking those boxes, like, oh, my shoulder's down, my head here, my hand's here, I walk down here, I push here. All the people following those, those bullet points aren't understanding that, like, you're just thinking of moving the weight from A to B. But this whole range in here from A to B is where all the magic happens. Everything in here is what counts. So it's how we get to B, and it's how we get back down to A and how we get back up again and we keep this elastic feeling of the weight and sitting on muscle and not just locking on joints and putting down and pushing up. Like my goal of a bench press isn't to get the bar off my chest and out as far as I can. My goal is to hit my, to stimulate my chest. It's a chest exercise. So it's the same if I do a bicep curl, I'm not just trying to pull my hand up and hit my bicep. I have to flex my bicep and I have to learn how to untense my, still let my bicep lengthen and pull in so just getting into people's minds that like the way that you're doing things and the tempo that you're doing things is something I can visually see because I've conditioned, I'm conditioned to see it and it's just something natural that I see where it's like I see a hitch in the line of the movement. So the movement's smooth and it's in here and I can see that physically when you're doing a weight. So I can see where the, where the hitch is and like then we start to understand well why are you, why are you having this issue with your movement? Well it's like you're not starting, you're not putting the weight where you should. Instead of balancing in your hand, you're locking into your neck and your traps. And your hand's barely doing anything, right? So it's like we have to learn how to, it's just like deconstructing people and just changing these little, the first thing that moves or way the, where their head is or how their hand's angled or their wrist. And you'll see like, you'll see when people have this done to them, it's like this like, this like, like moment where it's like, oh, it's like something happened and you don't have to tell them like now you feel it. They're like, no, no, I feel it now. Like I understand, like now I understand where my back is. I've trained my, I've trained my back. You've trained your back for 10 years, five years, and you've never felt muscles activate in your back and seize up because they're working. It's just been a matter of pulling something to you and letting it drop away. And this act of doing the movement is just going to elicit results, which is so we need to get so far away from that thinking that it's not even funny. So I'm Mike Van Wick, IFBB pro bodybuilder, and now I'm turning into a coach, I could say. More, as a, more of an encourager and a torturer than a coach. <laughs> wicked, 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 wicked. wicked.